Hi, I'm John Bergman, and I'm one of the founders of the Flipped Learning Movement. Uh, here to talk to you about flipped learning. When you think about flipped learning, a lot of people like homework and videos and all that kind of stuff. What I really like to do is kind of give you a really good framework about flipped learning. And I want to phrase it um, in a couple of terms. I want us to look at two kinds of spaces. First of all, there's the group space. And secondly, there's the individual space. You see in a traditional classroom, what happens in the group space is the teacher stands up and lectures. She talks to her students and they're listening and they're getting information from chalkboard. And then what happens in the traditional classroom is then the students then go home. So from the group space, the teacher's up there giving her lecture or whatever it might be and the students are uh, somewhat passive in their learning. And then when they go home, that's when they're gonna work by themselves. What happens in a flipped classroom is we're going to reverse the order of these two events. Now what's gonna happen in a flipped classroom is the individual space. Now this is gonna happen typically before class. The student's gonna be sitting looking at her computer, right? And then she's gonna to come to class and now the teacher, all right, it's the teacher, she's now working with her students in small groups and getting the help they need. The beauty of the flipped model, of course, is the teacher is now in and amongst her students. She is with her students, helping them, I would argue, on the hard stuff. You see, the flipped learning works because it changes the space in which the direct instruction takes place, the lecture, if you will. The lecture now happens, if you will, in the individual space, and then the help happens in the group space. Now, the disadvantage of the traditional model, of course, is that a student goes home and they need help. They need the help from the teacher, but the teacher isn't present at home. You know, another way to, to look at this is to think about Bloom's taxonomy. The bottom, we have knowledge, then application, analysis, evaluation, and creation. What usually happens in a traditional classroom is that teachers spend the vast majority of their class time down here because they're teaching their kids stuff. That's what's happening in the group space. And then we send students home here to do the hard stuff. But of course, this is the hard stuff, right? This is what students struggle with. So if that's what they're struggling with, what we need to do is this really needs to happen with the teacher present, right? And this can be done um, in the individual space. So you see, what we're doing is we are essentially flipping Bloom's taxonomy. We're going to take this, this diagram and we're going to flip it upside down. Or even a better way to think of Bloom's taxonomy is this shape. a diamond shaped. What I love about the flipped diamond shape, the, or Bloom's taxonomy as a diamond, is if you think of the shape in terms of time, I think we should spend the vast majority of our class time in the middle of Bloom's taxonomy. This right here can be done in a flipped manner through flipped videos, and this stuff right here is going to happen in the class. The reason I wouldn't necessarily, some people say, oh, we should flip Bloom's taxonomy and be an upside down triangle. The problem is, is I just don't think it's realistic that you're going to spend the vast majority of your class time in creation. But I think in K-12 education, even in university, I believe that we should spend the bulk of our class time in the middle of Bloom's taxonomy. And let me say one other thing about the sort of group space versus individual space. A lot of people get hung up by this idea that the flipped classroom has to happen in the homework space. And some people might argue that in my classroom, I really don't have homework. We don't do that much homework. I want to get over this idea of homework in the flipped classroom. Homework isn't always required. It can happen inside the classroom. So one very popular way that flipped learning is starting to catch some traction is what we like to call the in-flip. In the in-flip model, the flip happens completely inside the class. So a classic story, I know of a teacher in, uh, in Washington State, and what he does is he has half of his kids who are working in the individual space in class, right? They're watching um, these short video clips on the computers 
with headphones on. The other half of the kids are working with him, the teacher, on difficult concepts. And then, of course, maybe you get the idea, it's not that big a deal. What do they do? They rotate. So he's actually not assigning homework at all. And this is the in-flip model. So when you think about the flipped classroom, you really need to think in terms of the group, right? We talked about that, versus the individual space. So don't think homework, class time, homework, class time. That is the most common way the flip is happening, but think in terms of group and individual. And, and you're flipping what you're doing in the group space versus the individual space.